everyone knows what this offseason means for the Celtics. It's not just for them to repeat as NBA champions, which I like them to do because I say time and time again, their road to that 18th banner, their path through the 2023-2024 season, it was a cakewalk. I mean, no one could match your talent. No one could match your depth. No one could match your experience. No one can match anything they did on both ends of the floor. Cruise through the regular season. Cruise through the postseason. The biggest question around this Celtics team, though, is who are going to be or who will be the future owners of the franchise. One of the most iconic franchises in all sports. And we know what happened just days after the Celtics won an NBA title. It was Wick Grosbeck putting the team up for sale. And then the details came out. It was Irv Grosbeck doing it as he's a majority owner of the Celtics and he's doing it for estate planning purposes. Next is what a new report came out from the New York Post. Two quotes jumped out. One was, this is what happens when dad puts in most of the money. Second quote, team is expected to lose roughly $80 million because of luxury tax fines for being over the salary cap. So I point those two out to say this. The reports came out, we found out, Wick Grosbeck, the face of the franchise, the most public-facing owner out of all the ownership group that purchased his team back in 2003 for $360 million, that's Wick Grosbeck. He owns less than 3% of the Celtics. But the Grosbeck family led by his dad, Irv, owns majority of the team. And Irv Grosbeck himself, according to this report from the New York Post, says his controlling stake is roughly 20% of the Celtics. He's a majority owner. Wick, 63 years old, less than 3%. Irv is 90 years old. Grew up in Massachusetts. Went to UMass Amherst. Graduated from Harvard Business Law. Started a cable vision company in the 60s and turned it into billions. This guy is one of the most savvy businessmen there is in all of ownership of sports. And tell me when you've heard of Irv Grosbeck before these reports came out of the team going up for sale. Likely nobody. He's teaching business school out in Stanford, where he's one of the leaders of that business school out in Palo Alto. Can you believe it that a guy that owns an NBA team, majority of that team, would just quietly chill in his classroom, in his house, likely his mansion, out in California, instead of being sitting courtside, in TD Garden, with the Jays doing their thing, with them winning an 18th banner with this city that loves sports, ready to praise and just obviously worship whoever brings them a title, with all the Steve Bombers, with the James Dolans, with the Mark Cubans, Irv Grosbeck is one of a kind, right? But these reports come out, and I pointed out again, Irv Grosbeck's 90 years old, and controlling stake of roughly 20% of the Celtics, while his son Wick, who's 63, owns less than 3% of the team. This second apron's coming down. It starts this season. The second apron kicks in on teams on their 2024-2025 payroll. Let's run through the numbers quick and stick with me, all right? I'll try and go slow. The Celtics have the sixth highest payroll this season. Their payroll is $203 million for their entire team. The second apron, the cutoff there, is $190 million. So when I say first apron and second apron, it is what the first apron is, is basically a soft cap of what teams can spend up to. Once they exceed the first apron, every dollar they spend over hitting that first apron is taxed. Once they get over the sec second apron, which is $190 million, maybe a little less, 189 and a half. Let's go 190, clean round number. Once you go over that second apron of $190 million, every dollar after will get taxed. And depending how far over you are over that $190, the tax could be $1.50 per dollar. It could be up to $6.75 per dollar. So if the Celtics team payroll was $190 million and $1, they would have to pay an extra $1.50 to fill that team. They're $13 million over that $190 million, according to SpotRack. They're paying a minimum, and I'm going with the minimum here when I run through these numbers. Minimum tax of $1.50 for every dollar over. Then, if they stay over the second apron, there's a repeater tax that comes with it. Basically, the NBA wants to end the big threes or the Steve Bombers or the Wick Grosbecks that are willing to pay whatever to field a team or the Matt Ishbias of the Phoenix Suns that would pay and spend whatever to have a big three on the floor and pay all these superstars, and it ruins the parity of the team. Really, it's to defeat the Warriors doing their thing again for all those years. But all those rings they got, but all the taxes they paid. So let's get back to the Celtics. They have a $203 million payroll. 
The second apron at 190 million, that's 13 million over. If they're paying a repeater uh, minimum tax of $1.50 for every dollar over, then the repeater tax of an additional $4.50 for every dollar over, with this $13 million difference, they would pay $19.5 million on tax alone. Then that repeater tax, $58.5 million. So their payroll could be $203 million, but the growth specs and the rest of that ownership group has to pay an additional $78 million just to put a team on the floor. Their total cost of operation right now, at minimum, just to put a team on the floor, not paying coaches, not paying support staff, not paying rent to the TD Garden, which their lease runs through the 2030s. They don't own their own building. Just to put a team on the floor, it's $280 million it'll run them in a season. That's with the second apron tax. And again, if they run it back at this number or it increases, that repeater tax comes in. Teams 15 to 20 million over could pay up to 675 for every dollar. So I'm even being a little soft with estimating that. If it was 675, that'd be 101.2 million in taxes alone. First things first, the Celtics don't want to be a repeater. But think about it like this. They just went through a playoff run. They just want to ring. They don't own their own building. They don't get revenue from those additional home games. They don't even get revenue from concerts that could be at TD Garden or Dave Chappelle coming to the Garden, Sebastian Maniscalco, Drake. Those are the guys I've seen. They don't even get revenue from that to help offset what they spend on the Celtics. All postseason bonuses, that kicks in kicks in on player contracts. That's more money out of the pockets of the gross specs and the Pagliucas and the rest of the ownership on top of the taxes they have to pay. Getting back to that's what happens when dad puts in most of the money. Irv Grossbeck looked at the books, found out his numbers, realized what the second apron will be, and said, I'm getting out of this. From 2024 to 2025, just between the Jays alone, that will run them $84 million. 2025, 2026, between two players will be $107 million. Let's bring in Drew Holiday and Derek White. $165 million for four players. You want to add Kristaps Porzingis? $195 million. That's over how the second apron is right now. The tax will go up because obviously the payroll, the cap will go up. Revenue will go up. But $195 million for five players? And this is with Jalen Brown is with the Celtics until 2028 under contract. Jason Tatum under contract until 2030. Drew Holiday 2028. Derek White until 2029. Chris Stops will be a free agent in 2026. Wick says in the article, to say the sale is in any way related to losses is completely incorrect. Wick's just saving face there and saying it's not on me. This is what gets me and where I see Irv is coming from, to be pissed at his son for how much he ran up the bill. Irv Grosbeck purchased the Celtics in 2003 for $360 million. At the numbers I just laid out, that group will have to pay 78% of what they put down to purchase a team to put them on the floor for one season. One season. They're now valued at $6 billion, but Irv saw the books. He saw the tax numbers. He basically saw the credit card bill that his 63-year-old son ran up, and he said, we're done. The bank cut Wick off. But now they have to find someone to buy this team that will pay $6 billion, not have their own building until 2037 because their lease runs with TD Garden until 2036, and if they put, make that purchase right now, they have to figure out how to offload a Drew Holiday, a Derek White, a Kristaps Porzingis, and possibly one of the Jays. I know you don't want to hear that, but the Celtics got to this point. They were the most beloved ownership in Boston sports because they paid. But in reality, it wasn't them paying. It was Wick running up the credit card bill. Now, their due date for their minimum payments coming through, and Irving seeing $81 million is my minimum? What did it run up to? And he's saying, I'm out of here. And you bet, at 90 years old, self-made billionaire, he doesn't care about the NBA. He cares about assets and margins. And at 90, I wouldn't be surprised if taxes come into this. Hey, if I pass away and you get the team, it's going to be taxed 50% on what that sale is, right? Or if we do it right now and sell the estate, we could save 20%. A 20% difference on $6 billion? I didn't do the math there, but $6 billion is a lot of money. You saw what $6.75, $6.75 was on $78 million, how that adds up that quick. Same thing. 
The Celtics and the next owner, they need their own building. They need that revenue, but they need to get under the second apron. For this New York Post article to come out, I'm not astonished. I'm not surprised. It makes sense. For Irv to go to Wick, you had your fun. You won your ring. Enough. It's all about business with this family. I'm liquid. You're not. We got to set this thing up or we're just going to burn ourselves out. Again, in 1964, his dad founded a cable vision company here in Massachusetts. He became a billionaire. In 2003, he purchased the Celtics for $360 million. Now he wants to sell them his shares that is valued at $6 billion. But he has to pay $280 million just to field the team this year. No doubt that Irv is out. And Wick is the one that drove him out.